In this lesson, I would like us to talk about the long E sound and incorporate some of our writing skills with the personal narrative. So let's go ahead and let's first read the story, How Does Your Garden Grow? And then let's go back and highlight some of the words that use long E and note their spelling patterns. So you read right along with me. Do you like to eat? fresh veggies? Having a garden is a great way to grow the things you like to eat. Do you want to grow peas or beets? Buy the right seeds. Next, plant your seeds in neat rows. After you plant your seeds, water them. Your plants will grow at a very fast speed. Take out any weeds and keep your garden clean. Soon you will have yummy treats to eat. So I noticed a lot of long E sounding words in there. How about you? Let's go ahead and let's identify those. So first I read the first sentence. Do you like to eat, eat fresh veggies. Hmm. This one is one of those IE words. So, so far I noticed EA, IE. Having a garden is a great, oh, that's EA, but notice that this has long A sound and this one has long E sound. So sometimes the spelling patterns can be just a little bit tricky and we have to do our best to sound them out. Great way to grow the things you like to eat. There's another EA for that long E sound. Do you want to grow peas or beets? Long E with an EA and long E with two E's. Buy the right seeds. Two E's for long E sound. Next, plant your seeds in neat rows. EA says E and EE -E says E. After you plant your seeds, water them. Here we have our two E's again. Your plants will grow at a very fast speed. All right, oh, we forgot the very last part here. Take out any weeds and keep your garden clean. Soon you will have yummy treats to eat. Excellent job. Look at all these long E words we have here. So we have identified one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen long E words. So now that we've identified all of those long E words, I want to focus on our writing. Our goal this entire unit has been writing a personal narrative and we've been hitting that standard with a lot of journal prompts. Well, I would like you to think about this story and let's talk about what a narrative is. All right, let's take a look at our anchor chart first. So when we are writing a personal narrative, we are going to focus on something personal, something, maybe a small moment in our life. It can be real or it can be made up. It doesn't have to be something that actually happened. Sometimes when you're writing, you can use your imagination and pretend it was a real event. All stories have a BME, right? We talk about that all the time, sequencing, beginning, middle, end. So those are very important things to include in your narrative writing. And then we're going to describe the people in the story, the places, the setting, right? And things. So how do you describe? You can use your senses. How do things smell, taste, the sounds? How are you feeling? These are all parts of the story elements. Remember we talked about that in our lesson? Um, 
characters in a story, the sequencing in the story, the setting in the story. So when you're writing a personal narrative, it's very important that you explain how you're feeling. If you think back to the story we read that um, when Hannah moved away, that was definitely, even though it was an end rhyme poem, it also was a narrative. It also kind of told us how the little girl was feeling since her best friend has moved away. All right, and then dialogue. Now this is a little bit more advanced, so I would like you when you're writing, of course, to try and include some dialogue, and that's using those quotation marks, remember? When we write in dialogue, we have, um, we, we've talked about this, somebody does a we see these little marks right here, right, when they're talking. And that means that there's somebody talking in the story, okay? So let's go back to the garden and use that as an idea for us to write our own narrative. When we read this text, we were identifying all of those long E words, right? But now we also talked about writing a narrative. Let's use the idea of this garden passage to help us write our own story. So I want you to write a personal narrative pretending, or it could be a real story, talking about your own garden. I would like you to talk about a time when you planted a garden. So let's think about who, okay, so let's go back and think about that anchor chart that we had too, right? Who is in your story? So don't forget that's very important. Who is in your story? Who are the characters in your personal narrative? And how do they feel? That's a big part of a personal narrative is talking about the feelings and the actions, what's going on. So who is in the story? How do they feel? What is happening in the story? That's very important as well. Okay, what happens? Was there a problem when you planted the garden? What was the solution? So don't forget the who, the what, we have to include the feelings, and what about the where or the when? Now we know it's a garden, but maybe you're doing a greenhouse garden that's indoors, or maybe it's outside. Maybe you tried to plant a garden when the weather started getting cold, okay? and then it didn't grow so well. I don't know what your story is. It's going to be your make-believe story or it can be a true story. That's your choice. Don't forget what's really important in every story, just like we talked about in our anchor chart, is we have to have the beginning, the middle, and the end. All right you're going to have your second grade writing paper that's going to be attached to this assignment. You can print that out and write your story or you could write it in your journal and then upload it to the classroom. Don't forget, you could include dialogue, but don't forget your capitalization, your punctuation. Look at all of this. Look at how well this is written. They have capitalization, punctuation, they actually wrote in paragraphs. Right now, I want you to really focus on a solid beginning, middle, and end to your story and making sure that you're hitting all of these very important parts to a personal narrative. And of course, you can always draw an illustration too. Have fun in your writing, do great work, and I will read it and look forward to giving you some feedback when you turn it in.